Mr. Defoe, if I might start with you, uh, my understanding is that you saw Robert Eggers' previous film, The Witch, and you reached out and you chatted for a bit. What was that conversation about? Oh, just uh, to express my admiration for The Witch and just to check him out, really. <laughs> <laughs> I saw The Witch and uh, I saw it in the perfect uh, situation. I knew nothing about it. I had been away working and I saw a movie, I saw the poster, I went in to see a movie and I thought, wow, there's a filmmaker here. Who is he? And I wanted to meet him. So I arranged to have a meeting, we met, we had a lot in common, we uh, both come from the theater. Um, yeah, just really hit it off, and I just said, listen, if you have anything, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to work with you, because I, I think what you're doing is wonderful. It's very specific, there's great rigor. He's playing with the film language that uh, is very um, cinematic. <laughs> He's working in film. <laughs> um, you know, a complete world, uh, a, period, a period piece that doesn't, always point that it's a period piece, you can really enter it. Yeah. So all those things, really. You said, keep me in mind for future projects. Yeah. And then along comes this story, which was inspired in part by a real event. What do we know about what actually happened, and how did that inspire you, Robert? Um, my brother was, was working on a, on, a, on a ghost story in a lighthouse. And when he said, ghost story in a lighthouse, I thought, damn, that's a great idea. Uh, I wish I'd had it. Uh, hopefully he will fail miserably at writing it and I can steal the idea with his permission. Uh, and that's sort of, uh, I, that's going too far. But I, I asked him a couple months after, uh, how is your Lighthouse movie coming? And he said, n n you know, n it's not great. And I, so I asked him if I could take a crack at it. And uh, because when he said ghost story in a lighthouse, I pictured a black and white, crusty, dusty, rusty, musty atmosphere with, uh, you know, very much the, the visual imagery of the first dinner scene in this movie. And I wanted to find a story um, that could match that atmosphere. And so I began researching. And very quickly, I came across uh, what's generally called uh, the Smalls Lighthouse Tragedy. Uh, that took place in Wales uh, around 1800. And uh, the ending is, is somewhat folktale-like, so I, one doesn't know how true the story is, but supposedly it's true. And two lighthouse keepers, both named Thomas, one older, one younger, uh, a big storm comes, they're marooned on their lighthouse station, the old one dies, the young one goes crazy. That's the, the very basic bones of this movie. And because they were both named Thomas, I thought this this could be an interesting two-hander about uh, identity. Um, it's about many other things, uh, but but that's how it how it began. And then I thought, okay, we should probably have a mermaid. Uh, we need to have uh, a, a mystery in in the light uh, and 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 a Fresnel lens. That that beautiful Art Deco spaceship, uh, you know, is going to place us in the second half of the 19th century with this story. And because I wanted the, the foghorn with that certain sound and I wanted the lighthouse station to be a certain level of dilapidated, that was going to place us probably in the 1890s. So um, basically, after many years of, of doing other things, I, I called my brother up and, and said, you know, that lighthouse movie, let's, let's, let's do it together. And so in the past couple years leading up to this, uh, that's what we did. And Jaron, talk about shooting this film, because you and Rob together made some very specific choices that led to some very powerful effects. And I understand it involved some crazy lenses to make the two very handsome gentlemen uh, in between us look not so great. Uh, for, well, I think, I remember like for The Witch, I asked Rob, like, how much does vanity matter when we go in and shoot this thing? He's like, not at all, you know, and uh, kind of, I can see that pattern going forward, and um, I hope I have forgiveness, but like, it worked really hard to make them look as, you know, bad as possible, um, and and uh, a lot of the inspiration was just like early uh, photography, and, you know, um, people think of black and white, but there are a lot of ways to do it, like, you know, how you, what colors you extract to make your black and white image, um, and a lot, you know, early photography is just, it's really, there's no red light. It's like sensitive to blue and UV, and you know, you know how everyone looks under a black light. You know, um, so uh, I was trying to find a, a filter that could just eliminate all the the red light, and you know, as much of the green uh, before we're just like 
cutting too much light to make it impractical uh, to shoot. But um, yeah, th anyway, ultimately uh, Schneider made a custom filter um, that you know uh, emulated what's called orthochromatic film. It just you know sees blue and and uh, some green, and that's it. So uh, anything that's red, like you know skin tone, um, you know it darkens that immensely, and the skies are bright, and you know starts to look like a early film, but it um, wasn't like checking boxes to make it look like, uh, you know, what's, what's old timey, let's do that. I think it, it was just more of a general delving into the past, it's just like a feeling, you know, hopefully it's not obvious, hopefully it's just, you just see a texture and, and it just takes you there without you really, you know, being self-conscious about it. To get all of those shots required a fair amount of rehearsal, and I have heard Willem describe his take on how he thinks you feel about rehearsal. I would love to hear, Robert Pattinson, your thoughts on how Willem Dafoe approaches rehearsal <laughs> and how that differs from yours, uh, if I might. <laughs> <laughs> how does Willem approach rehearsal? Um, with an enormous amount of enthusiasm. Uh, he's kind of like a human dynamo. I mean, right from the very first day, he just was really, really relishing it. And and I think his, I interpreted his relish for rehearsal as being total comfort with the script and exact and knowing exactly what he, where he would want to go um, with the part, which terrified me because I didn't know what I was going to do at all in that period. Um, but then I realized afterwards that um, the second time we ran through the entire movie in rehearsal, Willem did it in entirely different ways, <laughs> like <laughs> effortlessly, <laughs> which then was the only leg I had to stand on and uh, terrified me even more. Um, but uh, uh, but it was it was fun, even though even even though it was a sort of vaguely traumatizing experience. Like it was actually really fun <laughs> to, to do it. I think doing anything with Willem is pretty fun. Well, let's talk about the vaguely traumatizing, and and I'd love to hear from both of you about like what were the hardest moments to make in this film? Because we should you were actually filming in Nova Scotia. It was quote unquote spring, but still rather chilly. A lot of this was real. Well, and what was the most excruciating moment for you? You just saw the movie. The being buried alive wasn't too <laughs> too cool. <laughs> don't want to do that again anytime soon. <laughs> I don't want to do it, period, anytime <laughs> soon. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was challenging. But like everything, you know, I'm an actor. I want those things. I want to live in that world. I, uh, so the horrible weather is part of it. It tells you what to do. It informs what you're doing. So I can't complain about it. Uh, this, was, no. this was real. <laughs> Did I complain? Did I cry? <laughs> But Jaron is fond of your lobster, I hear. But, um, <laughs> come on, you gotta cut me a slack. Man, we were like a slave to that camera. The film, la the film language is so beautiful in this that, in fact, the rehearsals, the rehearsals, normally the rehearsals are for, you know, to figure out the scenes, to get the actors comfortable. This rehearsal was to see where the camera was so we could fit into the frame to find out how to block things that were best uh, for the photography. But you know what? That was a beautiful discipline, and it was a beautiful structure. It, it took away some, uh, let's, for lack of a better word, let's say choices or things that we had to think about. And it became a discipline and really helped uh, to bring us into that world so much quicker and gave us a kind of clear I clearer idea of what uh, Robert and Jaren were trying to do. So that rehearsal was unusual because it was really for camera. It wasn't so much for the actors. Thank you so much to all of you for taking the time.